All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today's guest, we have a graduate from Indiana University, a man who started his own golf company called Four Golf. Introducing Blair Bouye. There goes that man's jock shot. <laughs> oh my God, did you see that? <laughs> America's team? Yeah, right. Oh, baby, it's a big day in sports. There's nothing like battling it out with your teammates all season long to go win a championship. Green Bay's got it this year. Huge move for him. I think it's going to be a game changer. We have a lot to talk about this busy week in the sports world. Welcome to the In a League of Their Own podcast. I know, yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, it's excited. You know, for, I've been following you guys on Instagram for a few days now and seeing all the content you guys put out, so I'm excited. Yeah, um, just kind of kicking things off. I know, as I mentioned, you started a golf company with uh, Matt, uh, who's the other co-owner. Uh, what kind of got that started for you guys? What was your uh, passion to start for golf? Yeah, so me and Matt, you know, like I said, we went to IU together. Um, we were always kind of like spitting ideas back and forth on things like we want to do. We always knew we kind of wanted to do something. Always had kind of had that entrepreneurial mindset, um, kind of wanting to do things. We had a, a million ideas. Uh, we were trying to do like apps and app development and things like that. And but none of us had like, you know, uh, a coding background or anything like that. So that was going to be a little too much, a little over our head. Um, and I remember, you know, one day Matt called me. Um, I was still in, in, living in Indiana and in Indianapolis at the time. And he had been playing around a golf that day. And he was like, I think he was across the fairway. Uh, he just like hit his drive, uh, for drive on the whatever hole he was at. And like the cart girl or the cart, um, you know, the beer cart came by. And he's like, oh, man, I need a drink. So I got to run over to my cart, which is over here. And then so he was over here, had like run over his cart over here, come to the meet the you know, beer cart over here. And he's like, man, I wish all this was like all in one spot. Right. And so we, you know, came up with the idea to do a wallet, a golf wallet that kind of holds everything that you need, kind of not everything, obviously, like your clubs and everything, but, you know, it holds, you know, a lot of the things that you need, the smaller items that are kind of dispersed everywhere. So we uh, came up with a little. Uh, drawing on a little yellow legal pad and kind of went from there and kind of so we made up this little idea of, to put a little wall together it has a little hard shell um, that holds you know your cash cards divot tool bottle opener ball marker hold a couple tees um, it kind of has a nice like leather hard you know body that kind of feels good you know we kind of came with like um, we were spitballing back and forth we were um, you know, wanting to have something that felt like good, right? You want something that's like nice and sturdy and not flimsy and things like that. You know, golf's like, you know, a, you know, a sport that people like spend a lot of money on, right? So you want some good quality. So that's what we kind of went with, and uh, I was kind of running with it for, you know, I think it's been almost a year and a half, two years now. We've been trying to develop it, and we're almost there. We almost got the first batch of units that should be here in a couple of weeks. So that's kind of what the, the kind of the story is. The short story is. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that was definitely a, a catcher for me. And as soon as I uh, mentioned it to Austin as well, just kind of like you had mentioned, we crossed paths on Instagram and stuff and um, just came across some of your videos that you guys post. I know you, uh, you guys got some like funny, like meme kind of content. Uh, you do a little bit of golf instructing. Uh, maybe we'll dive into that in a little bit, talk about that. But yeah, the, go the uh, golfer's wall is kind of the the what caught my eye it's like wow i've never really seen anything like this it's a really good idea as far as like you said the divot divot fixer like putting t's in it just kind of looks like it's really good quality all the features and stuff on it just like wow like props to these guys for thinking of it because i definitely wouldn't have ever thought of anything like this oh yeah absolutely and that's one thing too is someone who golfs fairly often instead of putting all that stuff in your pockets or you're digging in your pockets all the time with your golf glove on, you just reach in your back pocket and it's all accessible to you right there. Instead of digging through all your ball, like your extra ball that you got, your ball marker, all that stuff, that's all loose in your pocket. So yeah, that was a really, really neat idea. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. We definitely get, you know, we're kind of, we do a lot of TikTok too. We uh, got into that last summer, you know, during COVID hit. So you know, what did everybody else do? You got on TikTok, right? So we started making a lot of those and we've got this like mixed bag reviews on it. You know, some people, you know, which kind of, kind of expect to a certain extent, right? So, uh, you know, some people that are, what we found are, you know, more hardcore golfers have been golfing for a while, ever since they're kids, they're kind of ingrained in the way they golf, you know, and nothing wrong with that, but they are, you know, they like to do the things the way they do it. They, you know, like 
you know, a lot of golfers, like you see, you know, watching the Masters today, they all have a set routine, right? And so these golfers have a routine they do, and they like to stick to that way. Uh, but we also noticed that the, the newer generation golfers are kind of just going to, you know, have fun with their friends. You know, it's kind of relaxing to a certain extent if you don't take it too seriously. Um, you know, golf can be. Um, those people that kind of like that are just kind of more just, you know, pick up the sticks and go hit the ball and go chase it. You know, those, guys, those are the people that kind of like we found that are really resonating with the product so far. Um, we're hoping to be able to expand it a little more into that, but um, that's what we're first catching the eye of, you know, recently. And, you know, we're okay with that. You know, everybody's got to find their own niche, you know, for now, but, um, you know, we're definitely getting a lot of feedback too um, on like Instagram comments and TikTok comments of like, oh man, I wish this was a flask. And that's one thing that people will keep like it's I've, I, I saw it a couple of times like oh yeah that's kind of cool but this just keeps coming and coming and coming like, oh I wish this was a flask ah. I'm like yeah I mean I guess we might be able to do a version 2.0 or something something like that maybe down the road but uh uh that's 21 one, yeah, and older like, version <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure so that's kind of what we're uh dealing with right now and it's it's been fun pro uh, pro project for sure yeah kind of, kind of sticking with golf just like you said, the master started today. Golf was kind of the focal point of your guys' company. Um, golf kind of being one of those under the radar sports, obviously compared to MLB, NFL, and NBA, kind of take a higher priority in most uh, sports fanatics' lives. What was kind of your passion for golf? Like what kind of like your background with golf? Like do you get a set of clubs at four or five years old? I guess where did that kind of start for you? No, yeah, so I guess I'd fall into that bracket that I was talking about that our product's resonating with. You know, after high school, me and some friends, you know, had never really golfed before, and we just kind of decided to start going, and, you know, we were all, you know, decent. We weren't, like, trash, we weren't great at all, but, you know, it's something fun to do. Um, you know, right after we graduated high school, we knew we wouldn't be seeing each other a whole lot anymore, so I figured just, you know, right off in the sunset in the summer, that summer go before going to college and start playing some golf, and, uh, you know, got my first set. I think that my own personal set. I think I was using my brother's set that summer. Um, got my own set that Christmas, that, that same year, and started playing, you know, and just, you know, it was just something fun to do, I think. Just something different, challenging, right? You know, definitely frustrating sometimes for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's just fun to get outside, go have some fun. And, you know, if you're so inclined, drink some beer, you know. Um, so it's just something fun to do, a good pastime. Um, it's definitely something you can do, you know, when you're older too, right? You know, you can, you know, you can't always play basketball. You can't always play flag football, you know, when you're, you know, getting up there in your age. So if you, you know, get good at this, have fun with it, you can ride it off, you know, like I said, in the sunset and, you know, keep playing for the rest of your life. You know, it's a lifelong game. So it's something, definitely something fun you can do to, you know, keep, you know, meeting friends and go out and, you know, I know good reason to like, you know, meet some friends if you haven't seen in a while, or, you know, it's a good thing to have, good uh, skill to have if you're, you know, trying to, you know, work the business angle to have some business meetings and things like that. I think it's just, you know, that's kind of what, you know, led me getting into the game and, you know, another, you know, not only just hanging out with friends and things like that, but I think there's those ancillary benefits too is definitely what kind of drew me to it for sure. Awesome. Oh, yeah, you could definitely get out on the course and have a good old time, especially with that beer cart coming around time yeah. and time again. I <laughs> countless amount of times. I think that's what the market, like you said, the casual type golfer who the new style golfer, let's call them, that's kind of where that is all directed to. So that flask idea, I think would definitely be a huge hit with, or even a golf club, maybe the handle pulls off flask. <laughs> so you just throw it in your bag and it's a full, you know, some yeah. people, people love to get to have a few alcoholic beverages out on the course. No, for sure. So, so if you're not, you know, having the best round of your life, you know, just got to loosen up a little bit, right. Got to get the birdie juice flowing. Yeah. Uh, kind of circling back to your company, um, as far as, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are pretty much in your early stages with the company still, right? Um, I guess kind of what's your outlook? Um, obviously, being a business owner, you never, the first really four or five years, most people are in the negative and they say after you, if you can make it past that five-year mark, you're finally in profit and flourishing and stuff like that. I guess, what are your aspirations for, for golf beyond that five-year mark? Yeah, you know, it's something we've kind of gone back and forth on as far as, you know, first of all, we're obviously just trying to make it through, you know, we first ordered our first uh, round of units, you know, a while ago, we're still waiting on those to get here, just, you know, some things, you know, trying to make sure we get the product that we want to actually give the people, right? We want to make sure that products, 
you know, good quality to what we want to be selling. You don't want to be selling something we aren't proud of, right? So we're, um, that's kind of what we've been holding us back for now, but we're almost there. A couple of weeks uh, left before we get those going out. But um, yeah, I think the outlook, we've, like I said, we've gone back and forth on like, okay, like we should probably kind of come up with a couple of different products, right? We're always, we're about like innovation in golf. Um, it's one thing that we talked about really in the early stages, how like golf, you know, you, they use a lot of different technology now than they used to back in the day, but really like, it's really the same things they use, right? Like there's not a ton of different innovations for, you know, what you see out on the golf course from what you saw like 50 years ago or something like that. I mean, you know, you have different, you know, uh, I mean, metals and things like that you use, you know, for the golf clubs, but, you know, it's basically the same golf clubs essentially. So there's not really done a ton of innovation. So we've, we've gone back and forth on a couple of different ideas and what we want to try and do next. Um, we had some really good practice as far as working with product engineers for the first product. Um, so that was really good for us to have that under our belt and just get that out of the way. Cause I don't think we need to go that route. So we kind of speed up our processes later on if we do decide to go make up any more products. Um, so I think, yeah, the long-term outlook, I think we're just going to try and ride this wallet out. I think we might try and come up with a couple of different versions of it. Um, you know, I've uh, you know, a little sneak peek, I guess, but we've thought about trying to do, um, kind of condensed version of the wallet and make it kind of like you've seen the, you know, iPhone uh, cases that kind of have the like, uh, you know, card holders on the back of them and things like that. We've thought about maybe trying to make a version that just attaches to your phone and just having one more thing that's like all condensed into one. Uh, we've thought about that. So we haven't given uh, dove too deep into that yet, but it's something we've, you know, tossed back and forth on. Um, so we're definitely, just, like I said, like if you see, look at our, uh, uh, Instagram handle or TikTok, you'll probably see, you know, innovating golf, you know, somewhere in the bio. That's kind of what we're trying to do. We're just kind of come up with different products you've never seen before that, you know, we think people like that would be useful for people that are good quality. Um, so that's, that's what the direction is right now. Um, uh, you know, right now, like I said, we're just, you know, riding out the wallet that we have and we're going to take all the feedback we can um, and then just put it into the, you know, the going into the future, trying to, you know, um, improve upon what we already have and then make some different versions and then just, you know, ride the plunges and just go, you know, wherever we, we kind of want to go, you know, I think golf, you know, you're kind of seeing it grow as far as, you know, youthful, I think it's getting more youthful now and it's growing as far as different populations playing, I think, even though it's already super populous with different, you know, backgrounds, people playing in golf. You saw today, uh, Larry Elder, I think he was the first that broke the color barrier at the Masters. Well, not, I don't know how long ago it was, but he was a, did the first tee off today. So I think just, you see that more and more today, I think just is more and more opportunity to be able to grow and innovate different games in that sense, yeah. Um, trying to move on here. You have a question, Austin? Look like you're about to say something and I want to cut you off. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out how to word it. Um, so with your guys's target market, I guess, how, how do you guys put yourself out there as far as advertising goes? Do you go to golf tournaments? Do you, is it strictly online? Like how do people find out about you guys? Like how, how do, how would someone who doesn't know about you find you? Yeah. So right now, like I said, we've, we've done a lot of TikTok. We've gotten, you know, a decent amount of following on there. I think 6,000, some followers, a good amount of likes. We've had a few kind of blow up, I guess, to a certain extent uh, with a good amount of views. Um, so that's where we get a lot of our viewership from right now. Uh, we post a lot on Instagram. I know Matt's really active on there, posting almost every single day on there. Um, we, you know, I think you mentioned it earlier. Uh, we work with an instructor right now uh, who gives our golf tips. And so we send those email blasts out. People really like, seem to like those. We have a really good open rate on those as far as people looking at those and uh, using those, you know, those uh, drills that we put out. Um, when we first launched our, you know, I guess pre-order is what you would call it. Uh, back in December, we did a, um, a influencer. We paid a golf rabble to uh, give us a shout out. Um, and they have, I think almost hundred thousand followers. So they gave, they gave us a shout out and, um, you know, got some good, um, you know, exposure that way. Uh, we definitely have contacts with other, you know, uh, influencers to be able to get some more exposure. Once we actually get the wallets in hand, we definitely have a plan to send some of those out to those people so they can review it themselves, have it themselves, hold it, tell people, you know, what they think about it. Um, you know, we've had a couple other, you know, just, um, not, I guess, super what you would think of as a golf influencers, um, 
uh, talking to us. Like I think Jake Adams is one. He's like a comedian, but he's also a golfer and he does a lot of golf, you know, things. I don't know if you've seen him on Instagram or not, but you know, he's a pretty good guy. We saw him actually at the Waste Management Tour or tournament this uh, this year. It was kind of cool to meet him. And um, I forget his friend, gosh dang it. Um, that's going to bother me the whole time. But him and his friend, his friend's a big uh, golf influencer as well on Instagram, got a good following. Um, so we, we hooked him up with the hat. He, uh, you know, wore his hat on a golf talk show he did on TV one day. So just kind of, you know, putting ourselves out there on uh, Instagram. And um, I know Matt, again, does a really good job of reaching out to people um, and get, starting those relationships. So I think that's one, one big thing we're trying to do is mostly online. I definitely have thought about the idea, like you said, of going to golf tournaments. I interned with a golf tournament back in college. I thought about going to a couple of those and, you know, I, they do some giveaways and things like that. So I thought about going that route uh, once we get the walls in hand. I uh, definitely thought about just doing some, you know, on foot on feet on the ground uh, marketing, just going to some golf courses, putting the wallet in people's hands, uh, just so they can actually have it and see it in their hands before, you know, instead of just looking online, clicking, you know, scrolling through the pictures. So I definitely thought about doing that once we actually get the wallets in hand as well. Um, so that's our that's our plan right now and what we're doing. Um, definitely more in the works as far as again, once we get the wallets in hand, definitely going to be start pumping out some more content. I know when we first got our first sample, that was big for us to get our first real samples. We actually get some more content and tell people what, okay, this is what it looks like. This is us using it. Like this thing is actually like, like nice and solid. It looks good. It works, right? Like it does what we want it to do. So, um, you know, we're definitely really excited to get, you know, our first unit or first round again in, like I said, once they get here um, and start putting those out, um, sending those to the influencers we have had that contact with so they can, you know, see it for themselves so people can have that kind of um, reassurance. You know, I think whenever you see something brand new, like we have, people are kind of hesitant, right? Like, oh man, I don't know. I've never seen that before. I'm kind of scared. I don't want to spend my money on it. I've never seen it. Is it, is it good? Do I like it? You see somebody else have it that has a following like some of these influencers have. It kind of gives you that reassurance, right? That peace of mind, like, okay, this guy likes it or he's used it before. This guy's holding it. Like it means something like, maybe it's, you know, it has that good reputation and when we have that influence or giving us that kind of shout. So sticking along those same lines, would you guys be open, like say there's a, up in, a, a golfer who's on the Corn Ferry Tour, for instance, and finds you guys and says, hey, I'd like to rep your guys' stuff, that type of thing. Is that something that you guys are like willing to do? Like is as part of your business option or is it strictly – more on like the casual side no we're actually holding out for bryson we want him to kind of dm us no, no i'm kidding no yeah no we would definitely be up for that that'd be awesome you know we would definitely uh warm that um you know offer um we've reached out to a few i know again like i said matt does a really good job of reaching out to those kinds of people um just trying to start those relationships uh, we've definitely thought about doing some kind of you know influence or uh you know um paid campaigns where if we, you know, have somebody like that, that, you know, wants to give us a shout out and they can give, you know, get a, a promo code or something like that with their name, something like that. We definitely thought about that. If we can, you know, find the right you know, relationship, it would definitely be something we would love to do. Yeah. I mean, go golf is a, a huge industry as far as like, kind of like you said, you can pick it up young, you can go into it old. There's always the cliche of what do retired people do? All oh, they go golf. Cause it's something you can jump into at any age um whether you catch on fast or it takes you a while it's still for the most part relaxing you shank some in the water or the trees once in a while but for the most part it's an enjoyable sport but um yeah for you like you guys starting out it's definitely like there's a, a vast industry as far as the regular pga tour the senior tour um the lpga even some of these like more amateur leagues it's really a it's kind of an interconnected where um, it's kind of one of the industries you talk about with like hockey, how, whether you're just out of high school or in the NHL, it's kind of a big mesh point where everybody kind of knows everybody. And I feel like golf is definitely that same way too. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a huge, huge. Right. I mean, I think it's, you know, one of the most you know popular games in the world. I believe. So, I mean, everywhere they play, I mean, it's just kind of an entry to, you know, an entry point, a barrier to entry, as far as, you know, it is kind of a little more expensive uh, than when you compare it to other sports, but I think, you know, comparatively, I think it has a huge, huge following. Like you mentioned a few, I know that like the European golf tour for sure, web.com. Um, I was a part of uh, the internship I did at Hurricane Junior Golf Tour. Oh, it was the, the world's largest, uh, you know, junior golf tour tournament, in, you know, in the world. 
Um, they had a lot of really good uh, sponsorships with uh, Tiger Woods was one and Will Smith. Um, there was a few others I can't remember. And, you know, I mean, the, the vastness of that and how quickly it's grown um, is, is amazing. And I know when I started, when I was there, I think it was started only a few years ago by, you know, was one guy out of a trailer. And now he's, you know, a few years later, he was working, uh, you know, had his own tournament in the Bahamas, I think. And it's amazing how quickly it was grown. Um, and that's just a junior tournament. Right. I mean, I mean, I think it's just amazing, you know, seeing again, like in that sense, seeing all the young people playing it. And I mean, these are really good uh, players too, right? They definitely kick my butt on the course, um, at like seven, eight years old, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, like you said, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's the vastness of it is crazy. Um, and you said, you know, really popular with, you know, an elderly community, but like we've mentioned a few times, you know, the, the, the young community is definitely buying in right now. I know a few years ago it was, you know, the dipping. People were worried, writing articles about it everywhere. Her golf's kind of losing popularity, but I think it's definitely, you know, rebounded. Every, all the research I've done, at least as of like six months ago, I think it's rebounded really well. Um, and I think it's definitely picking up and not only, you know, um, in organized, but in just kind of casual, like we've mentioned again, uh, just, you know, the casual, you know, 20 something just going out and playing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it has a, in top golf, you're wearing the hat right now. I think it's had a good, uh, definitely been, part of it, a part of that growth is, you know, uh, you know, allowing people to have a, you know, easier barrier to entry, I guess is a good way to put it. You don't have to commit to a whole set of clubs. You don't have to commit to the, you know, you know, if you want to wear the nice outfits, you don't have to do that. Just go, you know, eat some food, drink some beer and, you know, use their clubs and hit their balls. And that's all you got to do. Walk away, wipe your hands clean and you're good. I think that's been a huge benefit to the game as well. Yeah, for sure. And especially like uh, as far as making the game fun too, you have like, some game shows like I'm thinking of like Steph Curry does the Holy Moly game show and then even like Dude Perfect. So it's just like, especially with the influence of social media and you kind of like you mentioned the rebound of the younger audience taking a liking to golf. I feel like those kind of influencers have a lot to do with it too, where they see these guys doing trick shots or just like ma- t- taking random sports that obviously beyond your usual football, baseball, basketball um, and making them look fun and bringing awareness to them. So I mean, it's always good to see that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So do you think part of why golfing, like you mentioned how golf can be expensive. It is like, if you want to golf at a nice facility that has a reputation for everybody, like taking care of the course and all that type of stuff, you, you pay a pretty penny to go golf but do you think that is part of the experience slash the etiquette that you receive at a course like that, where like, if you go to a country club, everybody's replacing their divots, all that type of stuff where you, you go to some random golf course and people are just chunking up the whole fairway, just driving off, not doing anything. And you're paying 20 bucks to get around in. What what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it just, it's just part of getting into the game. I think, you know, some people, you know, like I'm from a small hometown, we really don't have, you know, the country clubs close to us. We just kind of have, you know, a, a kind of a, you know, not the nicest course, but it, you know, gets the job done. I think, you know, around where I'm at now in Scottsdale, there's a little bit of everything, right? You got the cheap courses, you've got the nice courses. Uh, of course, you know, the couple hundred dollars to play around. I think if you're just getting started, it's, you know, you're, definitely going to lean towards you know the the cheaper courses the cheaper you know gear uh and then just work your way up i think you know like anything you're going to get more knowledge of okay i like this brand this brand's more reputable if you're more new to the sport you know you're just like you know basketball or baseball you're going to find out you know okay you know most kids you know uh, use the uh, wilson evolution basketball you know uh, maybe if you're just playing just brand new to basketball you're not going to know like that's the you know go-to basketball for most people just the same way as you know golf you're going to you know, go whatever that's probably cheapest and what, you know, you can handle at that point or, um, or maybe what you're like, uh, maybe your dad played and he wants to get you to nice clubs. He, you know, he knows a little bit, but if you're brand new to it, you're just going to start out probably with, you know, the, the cheaper clubs, cheaper course, get used to it. And then, you know, you like it and you see like, okay, like I've seen these courses, nice courses that these players play at, you know, on uh, TV, I want to start, you know, experiencing some of that. You see the nice, nice photos you see on Instagram, some nice pictures. I think uh, PJ Koenig's a big, um, coming on Instagram, we've talked to, he's a big uh, golf photographer and he just has some beautiful courses. So you start getting more exposed to that. You kind of want to see that and play it for yourself and, you know, talk 
the friends you make, you know, you, you talk, you tell stories like, oh man, this course was so nice. This hole was so hard, you know, how it was laid out. You start getting more ingrained, you start getting more knowledge. I think that's just a natural route. And you can take with any sport. It's probably just, it looks a little different in golf just because, you know, the natural, you know, the way it is, the golf is just a different sport. You know, you don't, you don't go tell players, you know, your friends, oh man, you got to go play at this basketball court. It's so sick. You know, it's just kind of different in golf, right? You know, it's just, you know, the way the setting is, you know, you have these different courses, you know, you have different, um, you know, the, the people that make the courses and design them. They're, they're known for certain, you know, aspects of having maybe certain, you know, bunkers and certain layouts or, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, less woods or less trees and things like that, more trees, you know, just depending on who designed the course. So I think it's just part of it, growing that knowledge, you know, um, more, it's a little more different, like I said, than any other sport. So I think, you know, the more you play it, the more you get exposed to it, the more you're going to start obviously growing your knowledge and, you know, trying to experience new things. And, you know, I think just taking that natural progression. You guys getting to get into the club making business? <laughs> That's what we talked about one time. I think the uh, um, research and development's a little uh, out of our ballpark right now. Maybe if we sell about a million of these wallets, we might be able to handle it. But <laughs> uh, that's probably down the road um, a little ways. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of circling back to you, like you said, some of these courses and how we were making the reference of these cheap public courses and you're nicer, like you said, you live in Scottsdale. So you have like TPC Scottsdale and stuff like that. Um, we're kind of a, I guess, developing a more better understanding of the game, walking versus riding. Obviously, if I'm ever with like friends or family, it's always like, oh, let's get a car, let's get a cart. I know whatever Austin and I go out, it's usually we try to walk it uh, as much as we can, especially on the nicer courses, because it's like you said, getting a feel of the landscape where the bunkers are, where if you're on a cart path, you drive past where you might not notice a bunker, or you might not notice a little hill where um, it falls a little shorter, a little far of where you're usually driving. Um, just like you said, having those nicer courses that you go on, you feel like you never see people riding around on golf carts. Everybody's always walking it. And that's just that extra step of developing an appreciation for the more advanced game of golf. Definitely, definitely an appreciation for sure. Like I said, you know, the, the pictures like you see on Instagram, you know, it's it's cool to see, but it definitely is an appreciation. You know, these courses are some of them are just works of art. I mean, like the Phoenician around here is just immaculate. It's crazy. I haven't played it yet, but I mean, just driving by it, seeing pictures, like it's just insane that, you know, how nice they keep it, especially on like this time of year. It's just crazy how nice they are. And you know, like you said, it's an appreciation for sure. And I think, you know, it's nothing to take away from some of the other courses, you know, that aren't as nice, but it's, like I said, it's a natural progression. It's what you, you know, once you get into the sport and you play it a few times, it's just what you want to be able to experience the, the best of the best, right? My wife, if you're getting into something, that's my mindset, at least you might as well, you know, have the best of the best or do, you know, go, go to the best places, right? And experience it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's always been a dream of mine is to, golf's tbc sawgrass and the hole in 117 that'd yeah. be that'd be the, the real deal what what would be your dream course to go shoot around on i'm probably gonna go pretty basic here probably pebble beach i think would be just insane you know yeah, that would just be crazy i i know that one and um I mean, you gotta go with augusta's gotta be up there right just because the history that's there i mean it's insane but i think Pebble Beach would probably be the number one. Just, um, man, I'm forgetting which hole it is, but the par three there is just, you know, crazy. Um, I think it's, uh, I forget the announcer's name. Gosh, Jim Nance. He's got that hole. He's got the replication of that hole in his backyard, actually. Um, and it's pretty sick. Uh, but that, I think being able to play that course in that hole specifically would be uh, freaking awesome. Uh, kind of sticking with, I guess, Dream, um, like courses switching over to actual players if uh there's somebody that you could go out and golf 18 with who, who are you taking where you go either uh somebody head to head or somebody where you're on a team of two going against somebody else who are you taking uh in a round if i'm uh golfing with one person one uh one player who am i gonna take let's see 
I mean, Tiger, I feel like the easy answer. He's uh, not, not going to be able to golf for a while, I guess, but just a dream scenario, I guess. That's a tough one, man. I think Bryson would be fun right now. He's not my favorite golfer, I guess. He's not like hated, but he's not my favorite. But I think it'd be interesting to see his mindset because he is one of those guys I think he's taking a different view on the game right now. So I think it'd be good to get in his mind, you know, uh, pick his brain a little bit on how he sees it. Um, I think it would be a, a cool experience. Get a lot of takeaways for sure. I think it would be really interesting. Like I said, not my favorite golfer. Not to say I don't like him. I know some people don't like him. <laughs> but uh, um, he's definitely somebody I think you can get a lot of takeaways from, I think, for sure. Who is your favorite golfer? I don't know. If... So I had I, I had a, um, a kind of a fantasy draft kind of yesterday for the Masters. Me and some friends, we do like a, a – a snake draft of just drafting golfers we draft six there were 12 of us i think so we um, drafted quite a few golfers and i had the first pick it was the first time like i ever had the first pick um of the, of the litter so i picked jt justin thomas i like him quite a bit for sure he's definitely up there um so he was my favorite for the masters if you follow us on instagram you saw he's my pick for the masters i think right now i like I like his form he's in for sure um he's definitely playing well and i i think he has he's got some got some swagger i like the outfits he wears he, he's got some game too i mean but uh, i think he's up there he's a young guy right you know i think he's uh definitely probably up there for me i think right now it goes back and forth i like speed i, I almost picked speed to win but i think he was like the uh, homer pick right now i think everybody's riding him right now so like you know what it makes too much sense he won the last tournament the valero open last week um everybody was on him so i was trying to be a little different um it made too much sense i think as a pick so i went a different route yeah, I mean, you never know with the Masters. That's um, always basically the Super Bowl of golf, I guess, is what people always refer to it as. And it's um, – or even like uh, NASCAR, when we ever talk about NASCAR, but like the Daytona 500, everybody always goes all in, where sometimes you have a nobody that they win their first race or the only race they'll ever win is at the Daytona 500. I feel like the Masters is that way as well, where sometimes you see – maybe they don't win, but you see some guys crack the top ten that put together – the best best four rounds that they've ever put together in their life um so it's really cool to see that too either some up and coming guys some guys who've been around for a while that are finally making a name for themselves um yeah definitely looking forward to sunday to kind of see how things shake out yeah for sure i mean you see all the times they have the amateur dinner and they always flash you know who the, who's doing the best amateur uh round and who had the best amateur weekend and um you know, you always see some of those guys, and you know, I don't, I can't, I don't really know the last time an amateur won or if an amateur ever won. I don't think so, but I know, you know, there's always one up there in the top 20, top 15. I think, you know, going back to Bryson, I think I saw a stat where his best finish was his, um, his first ever on his amateur appearance there. Um, I don't think he's matched that, that uh, where I think he was like 11th that year, um, and I think in 2016. Um, that he hasn't he hasn't matched that matched that finish yet. So you see amateurs do that a lot. You see you know some people come out of nowhere like you said every now and then. Um, it's just a cool story. Um, like you said, no, they don't win all the time. You know it's hard to finish. You know it's hard to you know deal with that pressure. It's definitely hard to go in. You know if you have the lead going into Sunday morning, it's hard to sleep on that obviously. So definitely um, having that experience playing there before and you know having you know a 54 hole lead before is definitely good to be able to help you you know finish it out. Um, so I think, you know, it's definitely gonna be tough, but you definitely see those stories all the time. It's, it's definitely cool. I think that grand stage just kind of, again, helps, you know, I think seeing an amateur, you know, somebody come out of nowhere, uh, again, just helps, you know, green, grow more attraction to the game and grow the game in general. Yeah. And speaking of coming from nowhere, Colin Morikawa, that's my pick to win the masters this weekend. Yeah. He never heard of this guy. And then he wins back-to-back -back tournaments or whatever it was earlier in the season. He was on the Pat McAfee show. I saw his little brief segment on there, and he said he's switched up his putting grip, which was his problem. Dude's been on fire. I, I, He's one of those guys, like you said, one of those young dudes. He's came out of nowhere, and now – I think he's in the top 10 right now in the U.S. world rankings. Uh, if he's not, he's close. Yeah, I think he might, he's probably – yeah, I think he is like probably seven or eight, I think. And it's like nobody heard of this guy. Where did he come from? And boom, he's right there. Yeah. 
Definitely. I mean, I wish I could just change up my golf grip, my putting grip, and go be that good, right? I wish it was that easy, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. If I can get on the – maybe I, if, I, if I can become a scratch golfer at some point in my life, maybe you guys get to sponsor my, sponsor my stuff. There you go. <laughs> change up the grip. That's all you got to do. Yeah. It looks, looks like I'm going to get back to the drawing board. And I do think that's something I do a lot is I overthink it a lot. You know, you think you got to – you know, you start hitting poorly – and you think you got to make all these grand changes when really you just got off by one degree. You just got to change a little tweak. You just messed up your your uh, mechanics a little bit. You, it, it just looks bad because the ball is going 80 yards in the other direction. You don't want it to go. It looks bad, but really it's just a small tweak. You know, don't don't over manufacture it. Right, just you know, get back to the basics and you know, go up there and hit the ball. I think sometimes when I'm having bad rounds. Uh, sometimes I just come out of the funk better than ever when I just don't even practice swing. Just go up, don't even think about it. Just go hit it. Yeah, you watch the pros on TV. Some of those guys don't even – I feel like when you're that focused, like they have to be, like almost at that robotic type of this is what I do. Like we spoke about like each golfer has their own routine. So they all get into their own different mindset, whatever they're doing. I feel like being that focused on hitting that shot, seeing where the ball is going to go, doing all the mathematical equations in your head when you're like approaching the ball. I feel like taking that practice swing might, might've been the swing that puts it in the hole or puts it a couple in, couple inches from the cup because you're that focused on it where you start taking those practice swings. Then you start thinking about, Oh, I'm swinging it good. It feels good. And you're not thinking about everything else that goes into it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Just block out all the noise. Just go up, see ball, hit ball. Right. I mean, that's what they say in baseball. And that's what, you know, I think it kind of comes down to that to a certain extent in golf, just see it, hit it. And, you know, I mean, I, I to me, for me, uh, you know, obviously I'm not, you know, the best golfer, but you know, I, I can't put it, you know, within a five foot radius like some of you guys can. So to a certain extent, I'm not saying don't, don't aim kids, but you know, to a certain extent, you know, as long as I can, hit it in a general direction straight, get around the green that can, you know, manage from there. Right. I'm not going to be able to put it within a five foot radius like some of these guys are. So I think at that point, just go up as long as you're making good solid contact and, you know, it's going and, you know, not slicing the heck out of it. Right. You know, you're going you're to be doing it just fine. <laughs> yeah. The, the saying is aim big, miss big, aim small, miss small. Yeah. No, that's sure. for, we were talking about like, as far as like keeping the right mindset, I know that's kind of my issue. And he was also just talking about like practice swings and stuff where you get one, two practice swings. They look really good. And I'm like, Oh, that's good. It's like, I'm just, I'm going to do exactly that. I'm just going to add a little power to it. And then that's what it 80 yards off to the direction you didn't want it to go. Cause that's, it's a matter of keeping that consistent mindset. Cause now I thought my two practice swings were good. And then I changed it because I decided to put a little heat on it. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of been my, I guess, takeaway for the most part with my form is just you don't have to crush it every time. <laughs> yeah, definitely is one thing you got to don't, don't, I mean, you see like the stock yardages for some of these, you know, professional golfers and they're just obviously just crushing, right? But like, you're going to be better off to just club up, take it easy, nice, easy swing. Don't, you know, try and hit your nine, nine iron, you know, 180 yards, right? Just take it easy go one club up, you know, instead of hit, taking the nine, take the eight and just nice natural swing. And I think you're going to have more better results after that. I know I tend to get in that habit too, is trying to crush the ball. Right. But I just, you know, take club up. Like I said, just take it easy, nice natural swing and just let, let the club do its work. Yeah. Like you talked about the technology coming a long way. That's definitely, I feel like back in the day you used to see guys just swinging as hard as they can and now, I think the only guy still doing that is the Shambo, just gripping it and ripping it. And everybody else is like, "What? What's this guy doing out here?" But yeah, that technology of let the club do the work of just making sure you know, because you're not really the harder you try to swing. I feel like the more left and right the ball goes. Where if you're just focused on just rotating a hundred percent because that's the main thing i i hear all the time from a lot of golfers is hip flexibility a lot of people don't have the flexibility in their hips to rotate far enough to get the proper 
like what they're supposed to be getting out of their clubs. So then you start adjusting in all these other areas of swinging harder, doing all this other types of stuff when plain and simple, basically, if you just started doing yoga and got really flexible in your hips, you'd be able to rotate and, and crank a golf ball. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely one of the things that we do with our, uh, our instructor that we work with. He definitely has, you know, a lot of drills and tips on, you know, you know, what you can do to fix your swing and practice and things like that. But he also has quite a few like stretching tutorials and things like that to help with, you know, flexibility, like you said. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think it's definitely something that's underrated a little bit. People take for granted. Well, and then the walking aspect too, you're walking a couple miles and swinging, say you shoot par, you're swinging at least 72 times that and putting, I'm counting putting as a swing. So you're, you're doing that and walking that amount of distance. You got to be in pretty good shape if you want to be able to shoot a, I guess, a decent round when you're walking versus riding on the golf cart. Anybody who hits the ball decent could have a great day and shoot a 72 right in a golf cart. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, th- again, you know, I think, I mean, teach his own, you know, if you if you want to, you know, ride that cart and if it makes you feel more comfortable, you know, I think it can help you, but also it can kind of hurt you, right? You know, I think sitting down, you know, like this, I sit like this all day at work, at work you know, because I work from home right now, and I definitely take a big, you know, uh, I've been trying to stretch a lot recently. I think not only help my golf game, right, but also just be more, you know, healthy in general. Um, you know, I definitely, you know, feel better, you know, I, I feel way, way more loose now that I've been doing that for about three, four months now. Um, but I definitely, like I said, I think it's something to take, take for granted. Um, and definitely something, you know, you can get tighter too walking around the course, you know, um, for a whole 18 holes, you know, and definitely I think a lot of people, you know, probably working from home right now and I think getting out and walking is definitely good for it though. And I think I would definitely recommend, you know, ditching the car every once in a while for sure. Yeah, fatigue, fatigue is definitely a big part of the game. Like you're saying, staying in shape. I know a couple months back when I got on the driving range for the first time this spring, the next day it was just like, oh, shoulders and just like, because it's muscles you don't use very often, um, which obviously is where where you get, guys can golf all year round. It'd be nice to live somewhere where snow doesn't make that an issue. But, um, but yeah, that's definitely one thing that, again, another appreciation for these professionals to go out and golf four straight days in a row every single week. And that's just what goes on a scorecard, not including their practice rounds earlier in the week as well to just have being physical shape to not have that fatigue set in. Cause as soon as that fatigue sets in, then your swing changes and your mindset changes and your round can just fall apart. So again, just another appreciation for these guys that are able to do it week after week, really all year round. So long as they're in a place where they can golf. Yeah, it's definitely another thing that you don't think about a whole lot, too. Like, you go to the range, you might hit, you know, a bucket of balls, maybe like 30, 40 balls, but you get out on the course and, you know, you're hitting, you know, depending on how you're playing, you know, if you're, you know, hitting, you know, anywhere from 70 to maybe 100 swings in one round, you're not always doing that at the range. You got to get that, you know, you got to get your, you know, your body used to swinging that many times. So if you you aren't used to that when you get on the course, you're obviously going to break down a little bit towards the back nine and a lot, you know, final final stretch thing I definitely feel myself doing that a lot you know my hands are sore and tired they're not used to they can't grip the you know, club as well as I was you know just on the first hole definitely something you just got to get you know, get used to and you know put your body through it so you can get used to it play a you know full round of your full potential you a glove guy you wear a glove when you golf oh of course yeah both hands one hand no no yeah just one just this is the left hand I'm a righty <laughs> you got one of those uh chin butters no, I'm not a fan of those, dude. I'm, I don't, I don't like those, man. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's different. I don't know. I, I don't think I'm one of those guys that likes things, doesn't like things because it's just different. But like, I, I just never was a fan of those. Uh, yeah, I just get you a real putter. I've been thinking about getting one. People say <laughs> using your bottom hand is the key when you're when you're putting instead of how turning your shoulders. Just using your arm and mastering that tempo of how hard to hit it because you can just hold it straight. I don't know. I've just heard I've heard some good reviews on people that have used them. I've I know I, mean, I know they changed the rule that like you can't have it like rest against your body or something. It's like a pivot. not anymore. Yeah, you got to hold it. But um, I don't know. For me, I think if I did that, it would put a lot of pressure on like one movement of my small of this hand, whereas 
I feel like I would have more body control personally just with the whole shoulder movement. I don't know, maybe it's just because I've done it more. Uh, maybe it's just because I'm more used to it. Maybe that's the case. But uh, for me, I feel like I'd have more body control of just having the whole body, like the shoulder movement here with the putting rather than just relying on my one hand. Or, I mean, maybe I'm just going to twitch or something, just strength the putt. I don't know. I mean, that's just me in my head. I don't know. Um, kind of circling back here, I know we were talking about kind of favorite golfers, people we like to golf with. You mentioned Tiger Woods, obviously being off the course right now. Uh, what do you kind of think about his, his comeback? Do you think he, after his accident, he hangs it up? Um, or do you think this is just another, it's like clockwork for him, honestly, with how many injuries he's had over his career that might take a little longer to come back, but do you think he still comes back? Yeah, that was one thing I, when I first saw the news that day when he got in that accident, you know, we were getting more information. We didn't know how bad it was and what the circumstances were. Um, when I first saw, I guess I forget exactly what happened, but when I read the article of what you know, injuries he had, I'm like, dude, I, th I think he might be done. Like, I don't want to be like a pessimist, but, you know, I think, you know, I don't want to just assume that, you know, I mean, I forget how old he is, but he's gone through a lot, like you, you said, and I mean, at a certain point, you know, those do things, those things do catch up to you, right? And, you know, you, you can't, your body doesn't heal the way it used to, right? I mean, so I, I personally, I, I think he's probably done, you know, he's accomplished so much, you know, he, he got his, you know, major, you know, after, you know, his comeback, he went so long without a major win and he got that at Augusta and, you know, a couple of years ago. So I think, I think at this point, I would assume, I mean, he's built different, right? People like that just have a different mindset, but I would assume he's probably content with his career. Maybe not. Um, like I said, people like that are just have a different mindset completely than I can even imagine. But, you know, I would assume he's probably content with what he, you know, he did um, there, uh, you know, the last time he was there and you know, his career that he's had at this point. So I would assume based on, you know, his career and, you know, this, this is very, those injuries that I saw, he, probably done but you know maybe maybe he makes some like celebrity appearances but i would say probably uh um you know on you know on a major tournament it's probably probably done in my opinion i could be wrong completely but that's what I, that's what my takeaway was when i first saw the reports of you know more details come through yeah he's 40 he's 45 years old i think um maybe his time on the pga tour may be over but I think he could make a comeback potentially because you look at the Alex Smith issue. He almost had like the same sort of deal going on that took like three, four years to get back just to be able to walk. Obviously there were other circumstances that happened with his injury as far as like an infection and stuff like that. But five years goes by and he comes back. I, I don't know. I, re I really think he he just has that made up in his mind that he's going to do whatever it takes to catch Jack. It's possible, yeah. I, I mean, what's he, like three away now? Maybe closer, I forget, three majors? Yeah, two or three, I want to yeah. say. And it took him a while to get that last one, like we mentioned. Um, yeah, man, like if his injury hadn't happened, I think, I think he has a real shot of doing it. But, you know, it's going to be a while. I mean, I'm no doctor, obviously, but uh, – you know, if he can come back, I mean, that'd be great for the game again. You know, it's just add no, another, you know, Talamar to his freaking legacy. It's just already, you know, pages and pages long. But, um, you know, I don't want to, again, be a pessimist, but I, I don't want to count it. You know, I don't want to count him out, but I, I'd, I'd probably bet, bet against it. But um, like I said, I think he'd probably do some do some uh, celebrity appearances here and there and, you know, maybe some pro-ams and things like that. I don't, I don't think he's done swinging the clubs at all, but, um, you know, It'll be tough. It'll be tough. I'd love to see it, though. It'd be, it would, again, be great for the game. Um, one more question on my end, and then I'll throw it over to Austin before we let you go here. Um, obviously, this kind of talking with you, it's been revolving around golf. If golf didn't, golf didn't pan out the way it did or it didn't have as much of an impact as it did in your life, what other sports are you kind of interested in that you might um, – apply what you've done to create for golf into maybe a different industry oh man i listen to like football podcasts all day long you know that's that's definitely something i, I really like I, I you know i 
listen to, uh, I don't know if you guys listen to like PFF or anything like that, pro, pro, pro football focus, but I listen to a lot of their podcasts. I do a lot of their, you know, look at a lot of their analysis online and things, follow a lot of them on Twitter. Um, football, I'm really into it and, you know, I play basketball a lot. You know, I, I go shoot around a lot. Um, I play tennis with my buddies, you know, you know, every other week or so, you know, I do a little bit of everything as far as sports wise go, but football is definitely like the one thing I feel most passionate about. I, um, you know, had a job uh, opportunity at a, a football like an, an, an analysis uh, company. Um, and it was like breaking down film and things like that and getting grades and things like that. that I just didn't have time for uh, right now. Um, just it's a lot of time, time on the weekends would require a lot of time um, outside of my current job I have. So I thought I wanted to do it. It would have been awesome. But I just didn't have the time for it for other things I'm trying to get done. Um, it's been sweet, but I definitely like I definitely indulge in all the content. Like I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts like all day long as far as football goes. Um, I'm really looking forward to the draft in like 20, like three days, something like that, I think. Um, so that's going to be awesome. Definitely looking forward to it. Um, you know, I do a lot of football, um, fantasy football, I'm trying to start a dynasty league here for the first time. They're done dynasty league. That'd be so fun. I like doing the long term outlooks like that. I, was, I do a lot of, uh, you know, like looking at the, like breakdowns of like, salaries and things like that like pretending like i'm the gm and stuff like that so i think that's all that's really cool um so definitely i would probably i would love to go on that down that route and you know hopefully if things work out maybe i can have a shot doing something like that down the road who knows who's your favorite team so like i said i'm from indiana uh i i like the colts growing up but i never really had that like hardcore like you know fandom for them i guess i don't know what it was so i always said like wherever i move i'm gonna try and adopt that team where i go so i'm uh trying to adopt the cardinals right now i'm starting to dive into getting more dive into getting more of their news than uh most teams are trying to adopt that so i think this year i mean they're i mean why not reform right they have a you know cool i mean kyler murray is a cool guy he's a really freaking good quarterback you know He's exciting. DeAndre Hopkins, sick, you know, sign JJ Watt, you know, he's older, but you know, it's a cool signing. I think it's a good signing. AJ Green, a little busted now. He's older, but I think he can still, he can fill the Larry Fitzgerald role if he retires, I think. So I'm um, looking forward to the Cardinals, hometown, hometown team now. So looking forward to, you know, getting some gear and stuff for him, maybe a jersey or something like that. But uh, I think right now that's my team. But I mean, I like, I like all the underdogs. I like all the teams that are, you know, breaking it down and building it up through the draft. I like doing that and like analyzing how they can build it up, build up their team. So like, I like the uh, last couple of years going over the Dolphins, what they've done. I like diving into what they've done and what the routes they can take. Um, you know, who are the other teams right now? Jacksonville is a fun, exciting team right now just because they have such a blank slate, right? And they have, you know, Trevor Lawrence coming in, you know, everybody's assuming he's going to get picked number one. So I think it's cool to go into those kind of scenarios. Like, okay, how can this team go from, really bad or really good, really quick, right? With all that, uh, you know, stock, uh, draft stock that they have, all the, um, you know, uh, salary cap that they have. I think it's co cool to like play through those scena uh, scenarios yourself. It's really cool. So I like, I like diving into those a little bit. It's cool to be able to, you know, play God a little bit, right? With the, the teams, if you go on like some draft, uh, draft simulators and things like that. So it's kind of cool. So Cardinals are my team, but I like, to, I take an interest in all the teams that are rebuilding because it's kind of fun to go through those scenarios. Yeah, absolutely. And then I just have two quick questions here for you before we let you go. Um, I'm assuming your buddy, Matt, your co-owner, um, does he also live in Arizona? Yeah, yeah. We live in the same apartment. He's you know gone right now, but uh, yeah, we're, we're roommates. Um, yep. Yeah, he, he got here a year before I did. And you know, I, have, I visited him out here for the waste management the year before I moved. And I just like fell in love with it. It was the first time I ever came out here. So I'm like, dude, I'm coming out here. It had to be done. It was awesome. Awesome. And then the second question is, um, if it ever were to work out and this whole COVID thing uh, lightens up, maybe we could get together and do a 2v2 uh, golf competition. <laughs> yeah, dude, come on out. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't been to Arizona in a, in a while. Well, the only time I've ever been to is Grand Canyon, but – next step to go there is to actually get a nice round of golf in yeah I've, ne I've never been to arizona i've heard it's beautiful i got a buddy that lives just outside of phoenix and he says arizona is amazing yeah i definitely uh don't regret moving at all it's been awesome um you know the weather you can't beat it um the time zone low key is really nice you know 
Uh, you know, football starts at 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. You don't have to stay up at, you know, until midnight catching the Monday night football game and stuff like that. It's honestly nice, to, you know, having the time different difference there. Awesome. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of all I had. Um, again, appreciate having you on uh, as you guys kind of grill your brand and uh, with your wallet and just the overall company and stuff. Hopefully we can have you guys back on in the future. Uh, maybe Matt as well, have both of you on. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, it was great talking with you and look forward to doing something else in the future. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having me on. Yeah, it's awesome. Good talking with you guys and Definitely, I look forward to hearing some more of you guys talk about and hopefully have some more guests on. It'd be awesome. Hopefully, we can help out with that too. That'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, it was really fun. Hopefully, we uh, started something great here. And, you know, definitely, you know, uh, glad to see some more people, you know, getting out in the podcast game. It's definitely something that's growing, a platform that's growing. It's a popular platform. So good for you guys. And definitely look forward to seeing some more content. Thank awesome. you. We appreciate that.